Hey guys, welcome back to Strategy with Nether, also known as John. And this week I'm going to be doing the Suma, uh, Suoma? What is this thing? Sumoa S40. Samoa. Somua. Okay, anyway. Uh, T4 French tank destroyer that just came out with patch 7.4. And I'm just going to say right off the bat, this is the worst tier 4 tank destroyer in the game. Um, this is feels like a tier 3. It's that bad. I was just looking at the tech tree and just looking at uh, my thoughts on these other tier 4s. T40, great tank. I have 9 kills in it. It's my highest killing tank. M8, A1, awesome tank again. Great mobility. Uh, decent gun for flanking and stuff, but it's fast, so you can get in flank positions. Hetzer, pretty good tank. Nice big gun. It's got a big derp on it. Uh, decent armor with 80 uh, angled armor. Pretty nice. Uh, USSR, it's the SU-85B. It's got some pretty big guns on it. It's pretty nice. A uh, little, pretty good mobility. French tank, no mobility, and the guns suck. Um, there's really not much else to stay with, say with this thing. I would probably go with the derp just because it's the, the, the main penetrating gun is so inaccurate. It doesn't really matter. At 500 meters, you're not going to hit anything anyway. So you might as well get the big derp gun on it because it has no accuracy. Um, and it's slow as hell. So you're going to have to get right in people's face and try to derp them because you're going to have no accuracy. It's got no mobility. It's like a lot like the, um, what's that tank called? It's a lot like the uh, AMX-40. Slow as hell. You're going to have to keep moving all the time to get in a position. Probably not going to be flanking. I I know it sound like a just negative Nancy, but this thing sucks. There's nothing I can say that is good about this tank. Um, hit points, about... About average, I guess. I'm not even going to check. 280 doesn't matter. 200, 250, 300, 350. Tier 4s are going up against 7s. So it's nothing. You get one shot a lot. Especially with artillery, but this tank being so slow, you're going to get one shot already at a lot. Um, the first three games I played in this thing, I was taken out in the first five minutes by one shot already to the right over the top. Um, 260 uh, horsepower engine pushing 24 tons. Again, this thing's really, really slow. Traverse is decent, um, but you still can get flanked very easily. Um, 30, oh, that's, I'm sorry, that's the speed limit. You get into probably in the 20, 25 range or so. 30 Traverse is pretty bad for a TD. 36 is basically no armor in the front, and it's not angled really. This thing is pathetic. Uh, it sounds, I'm, I'm kind of mad at this tank. Every time I get in the stand, let's just look at my stats. I don't usually do this, but uh, let's see. All right, thirty-five percent win rate. Okay, now I I only have the class three badge, but so that means I was not even getting. Uh, I think you have to have get lucky in this tank to have a good game in it. Uh, it's really really hard to play because you have to get so close that you're going to get spotted, and it has no armor and it has no mobility. So it's luck. This tank is luck because a TD that has no mobility and no armor has to have a very accurate gun, or so, or some mobility. And this has neither. So this tank is really horrible. I don't even know what they're thinking. Um, okay. So anyway, those are my stats on this thing. Uh, that doesn't really matter. Three thirty view range is okay. It's pretty average. Uh, the radio four fifty five signal range is pretty average, especially for low tier. Uh, let's just get right into the modules. Um, let's see. I don't even know if you're going to start out with the CA-35. I doubt it. All right, so I was doing some checking. You will start with the radios, so you're going to start with that big radio. That's that's okay. Uh, tracks, you get a little bit of a um, degrees per second increase. Okay, I was checking again. You do have to have the tracks uh, to load any of the non uh, stock guns or this camo net so the tracks are really just for uh, load limit which is another reason this tank sucks you can't go right for the big gun you have to go through all sludge through all these other mod well at least the tracks first before you load the big gun um, 220 to 260 engine horsepower increase it's gonna help when you first get this thing it's gonna feel like it's not even moving um, so 260 gets you at least to moving and that's about it really uh, again, the whole time you're going to be trying to advance because the, the battle moves faster than you do. Um, these guns are horrible. Six, it, it's not that the penetration and damage are horrible. That's pretty. These are all decent de penetration and damage. I mean, that's pretty normal. The problem is um, their accuracy is horrible, just like all French tanks. And this thing has such poor mobility and armor 
you first of all, it's hard to get close to the battle to get to get shots to actually connect. You have to be within 300 meters. That was my experience. And once you do that, you're spotted and you have 36 armor. So you're pretty much toast and you only have 280 hit points. Usually you're going to be at the bottom of the tier. So you're going to be two shots. That's about it. This tank is really just I, I think Wargaming, what they need to do is rethink what they're thinking with the matchmaker because when a new person starts playing this game and they get into tier fours and see how bad it is, they're not going to want to spend their money on gold to get past this tank. They're going to quit this game and play something else. Like in Russia, maybe they don't have a lot of options or something, or maybe they're just trying to support a Russian game. In the United States, it doesn't work that way. And I don't think it works that way in Europe. Basically, in the United States, we've got games coming out of our butts. They're everywhere. And there's a bunch of free games. So you really should put matchmaking so that Tier 4s only go up against Tier 5s, that's it. Now, up against Tier 5 matches, this tank can be okay. It's not totally bad. It's, especially with the derp in Tier 5 match, it's okay. You can get a few shots on some guys before you die and get some, you know, 400 XP or 500. But in when you're going up against Tier 6s and 7s, this tank is like, what's the point? So when people people have to do that in their Tier 4s, they quit the game. And I really love to see the statistic on how many people they actually lose once they hit Tier 4, Tier 3 or Tier 4, and have to grind out the next tank, and it's totally horrible because of the matchmaking so bad they just, they, that they quit. Um, EverQuest did a similar study like that, and they lost 50% of the people within the first 10 levels because the game... The, uh, the game was so tif difficult in the first 10 levels. You know, getting lost and dying and losing all your gear, that's... And while I liked it and challenge was fun for me in EverQuest, they lost tons of people. Um, I'm willing to bet that almost nobody likes Tier 4 tanks. I don't see a lot of people posting on forums saying, I love Tier 4s going up against Tier 7s, that's what I do every day for fun. I would be willing to bet they lose 60% of their, of their US people, the new people that play the game, when they hit Tier 4. I would be willing to bet that, and they really should do some number crunching. And that's possibly why the NA server is so has such a low population. Not because this game isn't good. It's fun when you get to Tier 8 and 9, uh, because everybody's pretty evened out, and it's, it's a skill battle at that point. When you're a Tier 4 fighting Tier 7s, it's not really that much about skill. A total newbie in a Tiger can kill this tank in, two, in one shot, probably. Well, maybe two if it's 280. But still, what's this guy going to do against a Tiger? Nothing. He's not going to kill him. So that's why you they're going to lose players. So anyway, that's my little rant on Matchmaker and Tier 4s and why this tank is so horrible. It's not really even because it is a bad tank, but it, it, it's amplified at least three or four fold because of Matchmaker problems with Tier 4s. Uh, so anyway, that's pretty much... Let's go back to the guns real quick. 68 pin, 110 damage. You're not going to have either of these guns, so you do have to start out with this uh, pretty junky 68 pin, 110 damage gun. Um... Once you get the tracks, you can upgrade to this. The 100, the 100 pin, 110 damage gun, that's good pin and damage. I mean, it's not, not too bad for a tier 4. Again, the problem is accuracy. And what I did is just throw this derp on there. When I got the derp, I'll show you a game in it. It actually got a lot better, and I don't even like the derp guns. I usually don't like them because the accuracy is so bad, and I like to shoot from, especially in TDs, 400 meters, 500 meters. I need to be able to hit a 4 or 500 meters or I don't have fun in the tank. Uh, you can see in the M10 when I play it, I'm cam on Campanovka, I can't shoot across the field, which is 500 meters away, and pan guys. And that gun is a lot more accurate than this gun, so... Uh, anyway, a lot of that's crew. The crew is pretty pretty bad at 60%, um, and that just, not, just doesn't help. Uh, so anyway, this derp is actually pretty nice. It's 410 damage with all AG. Uh, it reloads at a decent speed, but once you get this, it's I, I still have a lot to grind out with it, like 12,000 experience. It's okay. Uh, but anyway, that that's all the modules. Let's get to some research. So here's the S40's research tree, and it's not very big, which is really nice, because you're hardly going to have anything unlocked, only the radios. That's it. Which, again, for this being such a crappy tank, makes this even more of a pain in the ass to play. Definitely play some other lines while you play this. That way, while this tank is waiting in a battle because you got killed really early on, you can play some other tanks. It's not so frustrating. Um, so anyway, the first thing you're going to want to do is go right out, because... We need to get these guns, so you need to get those tracks first so you can get your weight limit up and get these guns. And next thing I'd work on is the 75 and then the derp. Uh, the 75 makes this tank okay, and the derp is, makes it decent. This may, It's still bad tank with this. It's a little bit better with this. After that, get the uh, engine, and you're done with this tech tree, and you can move on to the S35.
So that's this tech tree, pretty simple. All right, we're back for some research, and I don't put equipment on anything up to, until it's tier 7. The one thing I do, do for my TDs, though, is I throw a camo net on as soon as possible. Um, that's just because I usually try to hide, especially... I try to hide in my TDs pretty much up to about tier 7-ish. Once you hit about tier 7 in TDs, sometimes you can go on the offensive and you don't have to hide so much. But until that point, you're trying to hide as much as possible. You almost have no armor, and you have no hit points. Pretty much you just don't want to get seen at all, so you want as much camo as you can. So I got this camo net, I got it for pretty cheap, and I just throw it on there, and I'll move it up with each tank, and it doesn't cost me any gold to move it up. Other than that, I would probably get the vents. Again, remember, this is for uh, light tanks. It might change once you get up into the little bit of uh, the heavier French tanks. And it's also, oh, it's a medium caliber, probably because I have the, the derp on there. So this should move up quite a ways with you if you get the medium up into at least tier 6 or 7. Uh, once you get into the tier 8s and 9s and stuff, you probably you might have to go with the large caliber, depending on how big the gun is. Um, the toolbox is always great for these low tiers. It doesn't cost any gold to remove because... It, it's nice to it's always nice to have some repair speed and binox on the t on the TD is always nice get that view range up high even higher um, and again it doesn't cost gold to move it up to the next tank so those are the things I would get um, no consumables until tier five or six I get one um, repair kit and tier seven I get a full stack and uh, with the derp I just saw he with the 100 I'd probably get a quarter he and two uh, three quarters AP so that's pretty much this tank and your crew is going to be about 60 percent probably by the time you unlock this thing it's going to be 65 percent or so uh, again your crew is going to be pretty bad it does not help that these guns are not accurate you can get away with it a little bit with the german guns because they're pretty accurate and you can get away with these crappier crews at four or five hundred meters but not the french tanks especially well i've pretty much uh talked about how crappy this tank <laughs> is enough let's show you a couple games so here's of the first battle out of two I'm going to show you, and this one's on Ensk, and this is an encounter battle where the flag is neutral and it's kind of in the center of the map, and then you got two teams going after it. I really like this new game mode, it's fun, it brings a whole new level of tactics to these maps. And I'm having, at first, it was frustrating to try to learn these new modes because basically these maps are all new at that point. You don't know the map, at least I don't know these maps. I've been playing on this map forever. Nice hit on on this little scout, the BT BT7. No armor on this thing. Um, but it was a little frustrating, I think, when 7.4 first came out because so many maps were quote unquote new to me. Once these new game modes came out, it felt like I was a newbie to the game again. I was having a hard time having good games. I didn't realize for a long time how important it is to know the maps and how much easier it makes this game. Um, and all it is, you can watch map strategies all you want, but there's nothing that beats experience. How many battles do you have? Um, that's really all it is. How many battles you have in which type of tank? If you're going to do heavies, stick to heavies, play heavies a lot, learn how... Because heavies play maps differently than mediums do. They're going to go to different areas, and they play the buildings and all that. Their strategy is totally different for each map. So you need to stick to one, if you're a newbie, stick to one tank style and play that tank relentlessly on all different kinds of maps and learn the maps for that type of tank. So I'm getting pretty decent in encounter maps now. Um, and in this tank, what I'm trying to do here, and, and on each one of these encounter maps, well, I'm not going to talk too, talk too much about maps and game modes. What I want to talk about, though, is I'm only showing you to two, one of the, two of the best games I had in this tank. I've only had, like, maybe... 30 games in this tank so far, max, probably 25 to 30, and a lot of the frustration comes from new game modes, as well as random number generator with teams, maybe I got some bad teams, um, but I really had a hard time in this tank, and I'm generally, I would consider myself pretty good at, at this game. I'm not super impressive, but I would say I'm, I'm decent, I'm good. I get lots of kills for how many deaths I get. I'm okay with it. I feel good with my stats. Uh, and this tank just let me down a lot. Now, you notice, the reason I have had a good game is because this is a very close quarters map. Everything I'm shooting at is within 300 meters so far anyway. I haven't shot at anything greater than 300 meters. These encounter battles are pretty good for this tank because what you can do with this tank is post up near the neutral flag like I'm doing here, get within 100 or 200 meters and get behind some cover. And that way, your your uh, accuracy is not as big of a deal. It can be hard to get this kind of angle on the neutral flag, but it pays off. 
So you can see my my camel net. I actually, with the replays, the camel net uh, activation is, is bugged. It says it's always on. Right now it's not. If you move left or right or back or back or forward, your camel net bonus um, ceases to exist. That's why the turreted TD American TD is pretty nice because you can turn your turret and your camo camo net is still active. That's really nice. So what do you got? Another S40. Let's see what we can do to this guy. Right in the cupola. That's another thing I didn't talk about. It's a giant turban right on your face, right there. Giant hat. I didn't mean to offend anybody by saying turban. Basically, I say turban just because it's it comes up off your head so much. Uh, not a lot of... Uh, let's call it Top Hat. I don't really care what we call it. Top Hat. It comes off your head quite a lot. And it's a very easy target to hit. I don't know if the if the armor dif is much different. It doesn't matter, though. It makes it really hard to hide your tank. It makes your profile a lot different. So what I'm thinking is, okay, while nobody's coming up on me, we've pretty much told that S40 that if he tries any advancing, he's going to get juiced. I'm going to move up into the cap. And I'm going to reposition so that if that guy comes around the corner, I'm going to nail him. Now from here... I might as well be shooting the dirt, because we're so close, I'm going to hit him no matter what. 182 hit points, that's two shot. A derp, I could probably derp this guy with that mini derp. Oh, but again, I'm way out in the open. I think I think there might be an arty over there at E0 or something. I'm clicking the map there. So I'm going to back up again now and get behind this T40. That way I hopefully can't get shot from the side. And if anybody comes around the corner, I'll have enough time to uh, make a move on him. But it looks like we got this. I mean, it's 9-4. Usually when you're five tanks up, the game's over. It's pretty rare that people come back from a nine, uh, five tank swing like this. Especially later in the game if more tanks are dead. Because obviously, five tanks when the other team... Okay, so I get nailed here from Artie. And this just happens in this tank. Um... Especially for an SU-26 with that reload speed the way they have. They're going to keep shooting at you till you're dead. So anyway, that was a pretty decent game. We actually won this game. I don't know how much XP I got. I probably should have just stuck around, but I didn't know how long it was going to take to finish this. And I want to get on some other games. Uh, but that's pretty typical in this tank. One shot from Artie, you're dead. One shot from a bigger tank, you're dead. Just get used to it. You're not going to have fun in this tank. You just need to, like every, like pretty much every tier 4. Almost no tier 4s are fun. You just have to grind through them and get to the next tanks. With each set, successive tank, 5, 6, 7, they get more fun. 6, it starts to be kind of fun. 7 is a lot more fun. And 8 and up is just kind of gravy. That's I have lots of fun, tier 8 and above. Anyway, let's get another game where I show you the dirt. So here's a game that's going to very, very rarely happen. Uh, I'm top of the list. I'm a tier 4 in a tier 4 game. This is a very, very rare event. Uh, this is how it should be. Tier 3s and 4s together, I really think it should be this way. 1s and 2s are together, and I think 3s and 4s should be get together, and that's because these tanks... The difference between even a 4 and a 5 is monumental. Um, lots of tank technology happened between Tier 4 and Tier 5, and it's, it's just like duplicating the tank's um, value in the match. Like, if you look at this tank, or even a Hetzer or whatever, versus like a PZ-4, forget it. The PZ-4 is going to light your ass up all day long. So this is uh, Muravanka, and this is a fun little map, and it's on standard battle, and this is where TDs usually sit. I'm probably not going to be hitting anybody from this far away, because I do have the derp, and that's probably about 500 meters away. This is probably about 400 meters, let's see. And yeah, I didn't, couldn't see before. I don't know if I'm going to get, get range in the replay. Oh. Okay, so 260, I could probably hit this guy. With the derp, you probably want to be 250 or lower, but still. And these tanks are probably going to get almost one shot by me. See, now I'm getting spotted. I'm a little, a little up on a ridge here, and that T-40 would eat my lunch. T-40 is an awesome TD. It's got a super fast reloading, very accurate. There we go. Now, I only did 145 to this guy. And this derp gun is not that great. I wish it was a little bit better. But you, it's hard to get all your damage in on a the guy. There we go. Usually I get about 100 damage with this dirt. But I do get up to 200, I think. I've seen before. Right here, I'm just trying to make sure no no fast tanks get around me. In these lower tiers, it's a lot... There's a lot more fast tanks. So you, especially as a slow TD like this, you need to be very careful that they don't get behind you. If there's a guy flanking, he's your priority, not the guy in front of you. 
Do not let that guy get around you. So again, I'm working the side of the map here. I'm getting shot by the tier 3 French RT, I think, or RD. I mean TD. Yep, there he is, UE57. He said 109. Boom! In your face! 178 meters. Perfect for this dirt. Now see how much I've already gotten jacked up? And this is, that was a tier 3. So tier 5 would have been dead already. SU-76, great TD. As a tier 3, that is a better tier TD than this tank. A fully upgraded SU-76 Russian tank destroyer. I guess it's really not a surprise that the Russian tank is better than the French <laughs> the better than the other tank. Uh, I'm not saying there's Russian bias. There's lots of other tanks that are maybe better than Russians, but I would say if you stacked them all up, I think they're Russians usually. As far as for me, I have way more... Uh, I have much better games than the Russian tanks. I think on the Russian server, those guys don't have as good a tank, uh, as good of experience in the Russian tanks because Russian tanks don't have any armor and they like to rush. When you rush in, your armor is what saves you, and since Russian tanks don't have any, you die, and you die fast. Um, so that's why the German tanks do a lot better on the Russian server because German tanks have heavier armor, and so when you're rushing in someone's face, the armor saves you. Uh, if everybody played like the American server, I think the Russian tanks would be winning more often than not. Because they're much better. Because in, in this game, I, I'm, I'm sorry, but this game is all about your gun. All it's about is, can I hit my target, and how much can I hit him for, how much penetration do I have, and how hard can I hit him. That's all that matters. And, since we're not talking about extreme ranges here, accuracy is not as big of a deal as it would be in real war. Um, I mean, it obviously is on the French tanks because their accuracy is so noticeably horrible. But even French tanks, I mean, the Russian tanks, the lower, higher pin, faster reloading guns, I think they have better accuracy than the French. The French seem to have the worst accuracy in the game. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments if that's not true. But I'm pretty sure the French have the least accurate guns in the whole game. A lot of that has to do with balancing the reloader. But what sucks is the tanks that don't have a reloader, like this tank, it's just like every other tank. So it having a bad accuracy seems like it's a con, but no pro. There's no pro. Anyway, it's going to be pretty sweet, sweet to get this thing up to have a reloader on a, on a TD. First shot into the track to stop the guy, and then, you know, three or four shots into the guy's hole and kill him off. That's going to be pretty sweet. So I'm cur again, I'm just creeping along methodically working my way up. Now see I'm doing 20 kilometers, that was top speed. 20 kph, top speed here. It's much like the AMX 40, do not stop moving. The problem is if TD doesn't stop moving, he doesn't have any camo bonus. I don't have my camo net if I'm moving, and I don't and I don't have my um I have a, a worse camo rating because I'm moving. Two things you don't want to have in a TD, especially a TD with no armor like this one. So, again, all the attributes of this tank work against it being a TD. Here's another guy thinking, oh god, really? This tank sucks. <laughs> Did I hit my buddy? Oh man, I thought I hit my buddy right there. So, reload late rates like 7 or 8 seconds on this derp. It's really not that bad for mini derp. But again, even though we're kicking butt, 13 to 9, I still have a hard time getting a lot of XP because I can't hit anybody. <laughs> and I can't get close enough to hit anybody. It's at 365 meters. I should be able to cream that guy. It's not very far. But whatever. It it happens. So we win this game. Uh, this is a good game for S40, which is pretty sad. But it is. It's the way it is. This this th tank has really brought down my stats the weeks that I've been playing it. I might just free XP my way out of this tank. It's that it's that horrible. And I usually do not do that. I usually use, use my free XP on like uh, like tracks for my high tier tanks. I don't like to play stock high tier tanks. Because high tier tanks, more often than low tier tanks, are going up against other high tier tanks that are already maxed out. Um, and they're just trying to grind out the next tier. The lower tanks is not as big of a deal because there's not as much time to be playing a, a tank while you're waiting for the next tier. So you still play against a lot of lower tier tanks that don't aren't fully unlocked. So I typically save all my free XP 
for like tracks and engines and stuff on the higher tier tanks. Anyway, 404 experience, that's actually really good for this tank as far as what I could get out of this tank. Let me know what you think about how you play this tank because I couldn't get this tank to do shit. Um, excuse my French. The uh, AMX-40 is actually, I feel, a little bit better than this tank even though it has some of the same problems with guns and stuff. Uh, at least it has a turret. Um, and I feel like, and the armor's a lot, lot better, and that would really help. If this thing had a lot more armor, it would be pretty, uh, uh, an okay tank. Uh, the S, the AMX-40, the only saving grace of that tank is the armor. If it didn't have any armor, it would be super, super, super ridiculously not fun. Anyway, that was this tank. Let me know what you think, and hopefully I'll be doing Tier 5 and 6 of this uh, TD line soon. Later, dudes.